my story it's not really a really unfortunate one the only thing unfortunate about it is how typical it is so i was born to like a teen mom my mom was like 15 years old when i was born so we grew up i mean basically poor you know always had hand-me-downs always lived in rundown places and um so i was like always running the streets i was a smart kid but um you know, I was just always into something. I could never stay home. I read a lot of books. I read my books. I'd go outside and, and run with the neighborhood kids. We always stayed in pretty colorful neighborhoods, so I was getting into some wild shit all the time. And, uh, you know, it was typical shit, like, you know, fighting with the neighborhood boys and stealing uh, from a young age. And I got into, uh, like, teenage years. You know, started uh, smoking weed, quickly moved on to other things, quickly moved on to harder drugs, um, alcohol, liquor, and um, pretty typical, honestly, like, too many of us go through this, but um, I didn't fucking grow out of it, you know, uh, one of my problems was is I thought I was smart. And uh, I thought I understood things and I thought I like knew how the world worked. I had a lot of assumptions. So I thought I was smart. And um, so getting into young adulthood, uh, I didn't really have any support or direction. You know, I mean, I had support. You know, I mean, I always could stay with my auntie, with my grandma, whatever, and I did that and I worked a job and um, had a bunch of different jobs, a bunch of different girlfriends. But um, eventually, uh, I was getting into trouble. You know, first time I went to jail was like petty larceny. I was drunk as hell, stealing some dumb shit out of a uh, motel parking lot. And um, went to jail for a couple of days and uh, during that time in my life, I got my baby's mom pregnant. And I wasn't going nowhere. I wasn't doing nothing like in life. I was uh, a, basically a street performer, playing my guitar like on the streets for for change, tips, whatever. And, um, and I wasn't like doing too bad at it, but I'd blow all my money on drugs and alcohol. And uh, I was staying with my baby's mom, uh, who uh, at the time was just becoming my baby's mom, got her pregnant. And uh, we were like, we were like staying with people, family, friends of family and stuff. And uh, we weren't like, we were, we were just a young, dumb couple. Um, you know, I think both just kind of like taking advantage of the convenience of the relationship rather than uh, actually trying to build a, a strong, healthy relationship. We were just basically using each other. We brought a kid into the world and that put a lot of, you know, that put us in like a grown folks position. And we weren't like fucking acting like grown folks at all. So, I was still drinking, using drugs. We were, and uh, we would fight all the time, me and baby's mom. My daughter was born, she was about one years old, and me and baby's mom were fighting all the time. We'd get physical, you know, I would, she'd be yelling in my face and I would fucking push her down to the ground and it'd escalate from there, you know. It's never my intention to to hurt anyone, you know. I don't think most people never like have that intention. Um, <clears throat> at least I know that I didn't, but I was negligent. I would let myself get in these situations and uh, basically disrespect myself with my actions, as well as disrespecting baby's mom. We'd be drunk and high and arguing about 
every normal thing and uh we both had like no stress management no communication skills no respect for our relationship and she'd get in my face and scream at me and I, I fucking hit her you know, I slapped her never you know I'm not gonna minimize it or justify it at all it's horrible ugly shit um but this is my life this is shit that I had to learn and grow from but anyways one night it was a uh, Things were continually escalating. And one night, we were super drunk, arguing, fighting. Um, and I, I, I choked her out. It was really like a brief, very brief um, physical altercation. We were arguing, screaming at each other for a long time. It was very. For, for a second, I jumped on her and I choked her, like a rear naked type style choke. And she called the police and I went to jail. And I ended up doing uh, six months in Oklahoma County Jail. Uh, my, first, my first offer was five years. My maximum exposure was 16 years. First offer was five years. I wasn't gonna sign for it. That's why I ended up you know, doing six months because I wasn't gonna sign for it. DA was just offering me time, five years, uh, three years, three in, two out, two in, three out. Eventually, uh, I had the public defender, like, kind of, I guess, I don't know, whatever. I had the, nego the public defender negotiate it down to a deferred sentence. So I'd get out of jail on probation, and if I completed my probation, um, it would eventually be dismissed. I would not have the felony charge of domestic violence by strangulation, along with all the other charges. Some were amended, some were dropped. But, um, yeah, I fucked that up. <laughs> fucked that up, still living that same lifestyle. Out with the homies, went to a bar, we were drinking. One of the homies gave me some Xanax. Worst shit to do, Xanax and alcohol. But um, I don't even know why I got picked up. But I know what, what I went to jail for. It was, I had one pill in my pocket, one Xanax pill in my pocket. And so they took me to jail for possession of a controlled dangerous substance. And um, did a couple of more weeks, like, like three more weeks. And, um, went and had the, the sentence accelerated to a suspended sentence, which means that I do, I am a convicted felon now, and, but I'm back out on probation. And so I have the, the conviction, but the sentence is suspended, uh, contingent on me completing the probation and all the terms and conditions of the probation so I don't have to go back and actually uh, do the time. So that time I started to get my shit together. About 25 by then. Went to AA, I got a sponsor. I really wanted to, I was really like, what it finally got me was I was still could not like in any way, shape, or form, get along with my baby's mama. Like, and, and it was at a point, like, that's all I wanted to do. Just wanted to be peaceful, you know. I wanted to be there for my daughter, be there with my daughter. And uh, it wasn't happening. Like, we couldn't live together. We couldn't even be in the same room together with my baby mama. Uh, it was just so volatile. And I take, I take full responsibility for my side of that because I was extremely childish and selfish and very low comprehension and stress management, communication skills and all that. Even though I thought I was trying, it was no, it was no good. So I decided I could not possibly uh, live with her. She got a new boyfriend. And so it was like, uh, that was a rough time because I thought, you know, we need to have our family. We need to do this family thing. We need to be together for the kid. And 
it wasn't working. And she found a new boyfriend anyways. And so, uh, and I had been living in like sober living houses. I'd been in like a, a Christian sober living house. And so, uh, it was, it was chill because I, they would let me bring my daughter over there and for the weekends. And so I got to have my daughter with me and I would go to, I was going to AA, got a sponsor and I, I worked that program. So that was my first time getting sober. That was when I realized, you know, like I, I was trying the hardest I could to try to get along with my baby's mom. And it was at that point impossible. And I realized like I had no control over any of these situations. And uh, at that point I didn't have any control over my own life. So I was about 25 at that time. And so that's when I, I finally kind of like let go of that, that need to try to control things. And uh, that was a huge turning point for me, my first time getting sober. But um, I didn't stay sober. What happened next was uh, I was in the program, I was doing really good. I was like working on getting my license back, working on getting my life together, completing all the terms and conditions of my probation. I had shit loads of classes to go to, batterers intervention classes. Along with the AA, it was court appointed, court mandated. Had like intensive outpatient, um, substance abuse, alcohol treatment classes I had to go to like five times a week. AA meetings basically every day, batterers intervention program, all of that. Uh, probation officer appointments, all of that. I was getting through all of that I had a girlfriend, she was also in recovery. Uh, she was in recovery for heroin addiction. And uh, she was staying in the sober living house. I was staying at my grandma's house at that time. And she relapsed. In her relapse, she overdosed and she passed away. She died in her sober living house, in her bed in the sober living house. And that was pretty rough. And I didn't take it very well. Um, I probably took it the opposite of very well. Like, I totally fucked my program off and what I was doing, like, I like could not like stop from like using and drinking. Um, I did the worst thing possible. I remember having like, feeling like a compulsion, like a possession, like walking to the liquor store, like I was in so much pain you know, emotionally, mentally, that, like, it's, it was almost like I couldn't stop myself from drinking or whatever. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but um, I hit the streets hard. I hit the fucking bottle hard. I even hit the needle. You know, it made absolutely no sense. Like, that's what killed my, she was actually my fiance. We had just got engaged and, um, so I went on a hardcore downward spiral for a while. And, you know, I eventually I completed my probation, but um, I wasn't in a good place. I was, I was back in the streets. I was back using drinking, you know, just as hard as ever because, you know, I, I, I didn't really comprehend how to deal with that pain. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. But eventually I got back to that point, like, this is not working, like, still had my daughter in my life, you know, I was trying to see her, trying to be with her. And, um, I was not, I was no good. I was no good for her. I wasn't an effective father in any way, shape or form. She was very young still at the time, three, four years old. And uh, I, 
got sober for a little bit. I got sober again. And, um, oh, I didn't just get sober again. I went to fucking, uh, inpatient mental facilities, like, multiple times. Like, I was, I was, I was pretty tripped the fuck out, like, the death of my fiance, and, uh, using drugs and stuff. I had a lot of, uh, uh, mental problems, you know, I didn't know how to deal with. Probably, probably a lot of it was drug-induced. Um, drug-induced, like, schizo, paranoid, manic, depressive, bipolar type shit, you know? I was in and out of the mental hospital for like a couple years. And uh, I, applied for, I, I applied for disability benefits because I, w I wanted to be stable. I wanted to get an apartment, man, so I could have my kid with me. Because honestly, to be honest, you know, I don't, I don't like to point the finger or anything, but my baby mom's not doing good either. She, at that time, she wasn't at all. Like, she was pretty much the same as I was. You know, that's why we could never fucking make anything function. We were, we were both fucked off. So, so that I applied for disability benefits. And at the time, I was fucking tripped out, but, um, during that whole process, because that shit is not, like, overnight, like, um, it took, like, 18 months, two years at least to get it, but during that time, I got sober again, on and off, because I needed to get that shit done, because, um, like, uh, I got a, a subsidized apartment from the mental health treatment programs. It's called a Hope Center in Southside Oklahoma City. They helped me get an apartment. So when I had that apartment, I was just trying to stay there because I could have my daughter there. You know, I could be half as stable there. I could still go out and play my guitar and like busk for cash, you know, so we have food and I got like a, some food stamps and shit. And so I could like, you know, half as function and have a safe place for my daughter to be. And, um, no, but the point is like, every time it seemed like I would be getting in control, I'd be getting stable, I would drink, I would use, you know. Uh, so in, anyways, in the process of you know, getting those disability benefits, I met my wife now, we actually met online. And um, basically one of the best things that ever happened to me you know, she's, I mean, she's amazing, but, um, you know, we would drink together, we would smoke together, I got a, I got a medical marijuana card, so we would, we would, uh, eventually got off the hard shit, but I, I would just smoke weed all the time, and pretty often, you know, drink, so, But um, I was drink. I was just smoking so much. Like I switched from cigarettes to cigars. And uh, one night I was laying in bed. I was like growing mushrooms and eating all the mushrooms and smoking so much weed, drinking beer and wine like every other night. One night I was laying in bed and like I could hear my lungs crackling. I'm like, holy shit. Like I started to think about it like it could be me, you know, like I could I could fucking die of lung cancer. Why not? Like I've lived my life like destroying my body all this time. So I was like I was like uh twenty nine years old at that time. I'm like man, I could I could be one of those motherfuckers that go at like, forty five years old, you know, from some kind of crazy ass cancer or something. I don't know. So Start thinking about my health, my lifestyle. I'm like, I don't want to live like this. I don't want the end result. I don't want 
to go down this road. I don't want to die like this. I don't want to be this type of father. I don't want to be this type of husband. I don't want to be this fucking dude. You know, I, I'm like, I, I could do better. So then I, I found Wes Watson on YouTube at that time. And, uh, like, spoke directly to my conscience. So I, I got into his, his, like, uh, bottom tier program. And, like, attached myself to it, into the community. And this, that was, like, a year ago. So I've been doing that for, like, this last year. And this is, like, you know, listening to Wes listening to the other leaders in the community it's like you know it's like this th these things that we all know these principles that we all understand but we don't live by them so submersing myself in this community in this culture self-development self-discipline um, you know, diet, exercise, nutrition, health, these things, like, really enable me to take control back over my life. And, um, so I haven't used any hard drugs in, like, like 18 months. I don't remember the exact dates. Um, I cut my medical marijuana card up, like, six months ago, I think. I hadn't had a drink since I started, like, the actual program, like, October 13th, 2020. I remember that date. And, um, I couldn't be fucking happier. Like, totally different life, totally different dude right now. I don't miss none of that shit. And, fuck, so I'm just at the point... Now we're like, you know, I always did think I was smart. I mean, I just kind of sort of had a reason to. None of my homies even made it like where I'm at in life. You know, like my best friends from back in the day that I used to run with, they're all locked up or fucked off. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that but some of them are dead. Some of them are dead, but um, locked up or fucked off, man. And so, you know, I'm in a position where I have time on my hands, and I care. I do care about people. I want to help people, so I just want to take everything that I've learned, and repackage it, man, and distribute it. You know, like I said, Wes Watson's been a huge influence on me this last year. And uh, that's, that's the dude, man. And, uh, but I have my own unique perspective on life. I have my own call of my own conscience that I have to answer to. And, uh, fuck, here I am. So now I do this, you know, I'm on social media trying to spread the message. You know, I, I host these groups, these burpee groups. You know, we work out together. And uh, we have some pretty deep conversations afterwards. And I'm just trying to support the community and be a positive influence. You know, my relationship with my wife has changed 180. With my daughter, changed 180. Even with my baby's mama. Do you know what I mean? She, she used to love to tell me very often, you know, what a piece of shit I was. You know, how worthless and useless I was. And, uh, you know, today things are different. We're both in, like, way different spots. And like, I'm the dude right now. You know, I, my daughter lives with me now. Um, I take good care of her. Drive her to school every day, pick her up every day from school. Make sure she does her homework. Um, you know what I mean? I tuck her into bed at night. Like, this is the shit that means everything to me. Because it wasn't always like this. And so, it's the principles, it's the habits. You know, if I can do this, anybody can do this. And I believe that. And it's all about the mindset. It's all about the principles. Do you live up to your principles through your habits? And so, 
nutrition and and fitness is just a way to express that you know being the best person that you can be physically mentally emotionally spiritually nutrition and fitness is just a way to express that so that's like the baseline like that changed my life itself like understanding that i could control myself through my nutrition the key to self-mastery is through what we ingest and make myself do things that i want to do that i know that are going to better myself in my position in my family you know working out and stuff like that so that's like the baseline discipline you know once i got like my nutrition and fitness on the right path you know my financials situation started I well at first I quit the vices I quit drinking and smoking and so obviously naturally my financial situation like changed not like dramatically not drastically I'm still right now I'm still on SSD but I'm not fucking broken scared you know like between me and my wife, we, we pay our bills. We've been paying off these uh, little credit cards that I have. And um, that's huge, just not to have that stress and fear. You know, it's pretty much every aspect of my life is improved. And I, I just want to share that with the world. Because I, I like I said in the beginning of this video, like, my circumstances were not that Unfortunate. Unfortunately, it was just a result of my poor decision making, my limited belief systems, terrible habits. And the only thing that's unfortunate about it is that it's so damn common. You know, I learned from all of these things. I've grown from all these things and I am a different person now. I am a better person now, I like to think. And um, so I don't look at it like a sob story. I do look at it like an overcoming story the unfortunate thing is that so many people live like that I lived you know so many people are still going through it and like not learning from it and they haven't found that uh, they haven't found that channel to their conscience they haven't bumped their head hard enough you know they haven't got there yet so I just want to be ready and available you know, for anybody in my way that I can help and uh, that's it for right now. That's it for right now. Just the outline of my story, I guess. The parts that I think are most important to get out there. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, feel free to reach out to me through any of my social media accounts. Yeah, I try to be very available and very responsive. Much love and respect, y'all. Sabo. Outro.